Hello everyone, my name is Joe Fernandez and I'll be going over Arms Warrior gameplay today. We will go through what comms are or should be good for an Arms Warrior, as well as updated talents and traits. There will also be a big section on general gameplay on how to play an Arms Warrior sufficiently. Right now, the best comps seem to be Turbo Cleave, Warrior DH Healer and Warrior Mage Druid. Warrior Mage Druid has high single target damage as well as incredible CC against the enemy team, resulting in controlled games whilst slaying someone. The other two comps rely on high overall pressure, good offensive burst plays and excellent defensive plays to outlive your opponents. Other comps that I believe will be good are Chaos C, Thunder Cleave and even comps like Warrior Shadowry Shaman may be good again. Whenever you play a comp consisting of high CC such as KFC or Warrior Mage Druid, you must bear in mind that your AoE or multi-target pressure may not be needed. This means to be very careful with the use of Sweeping Strikes or Blade Storm, so you don't break CC on enemy healers or DPS, as said CC is very powerful to maintain. So for cleaving two or more targets, I'd advise still going the Blade Storm build outside of compositions that rely on CC. Bear in mind Storm and Destruction may be changed if needing a more defensive utility. For single target, I'd still recommend the normal build with this although I'd say that Warbreaker and Sharpened Blade could be swapped out, more depending on what you face. In for the kill could also be used over Avatar if you have uptime and you prefer a more sustained increase to your overall damage instead of the burst that Avatar provides. Arms Warrior recently received big nerfs on three powerful traits being Lord of War, Executioner's Precision and Test of Might. This means we go from doing OP damage to doing good damage still, although due to these nerfs other Azerite traits could be more warranted now. The generic traits such as Laser Matrix, Thunderous Blast, Champions of Azeroth, Dagger in the Back, Rezan's Fury and Tidal Surge etc are all great options now. However, traits such as Executioner's Precision or Lord of War can still be great for single target burst compositions where you rely on burst damage to win games. Last but not least, Sudden Death procs no longer work with Death Sentence. This is a huge mobility nerf especially against classes such as Mages or Druids. This does however open new doors for us, one being that we could use Skull Splitter when going for purely single target pressure as this talent gives us more consistent damage as well as 20 rage. If however you play with Executioner's Precision or want to do multi-target damage, then Sudden Death will be a better choice. It also frees up an honor talent choice for us now that Death Sentence is no longer the go-to with this nerf, allowing us to pick another great honor talent. There are a number of factors we must consider when playing Arms Warrior. These are doing damage, setting up kill potentials, stopping CC, peeling damage, and last but not least, mobility usage. Most of the time as arms, our focus is to deal as much damage as possible in order to pressure teams into defensive situations, such as kiting or using defensive cooldowns to survive. At the start of games, I like to try and connect without using any mobility, which is vital to saving your mobility for important moments later in the game. Then my first global is to snare them, then proceed with my normal damage rotation to build pressure straight away. We want to burst as soon as we can as arms warrior comps due to the need of forcing defensive cooldowns right away, as well as making good use of our short cooldown or wall breaker or colossus smash. Using this cooldown effectively and as often as possible not only allows you more damage but gets you closer to kill potentials by getting rid of the enemy's defensive cooldowns. Here I see the warriors in battle stance, which means he has no damage reduction so I opt to use my Stormbot on him as well as my Warbreaker in attempt to burst him down. This usually results in defensive play from the enemy team, in this case we get Avenging Crusader from the Holy Paladin as well as the warrior using his trinket early on in the game. In general it's very good to catch enemies off guard or simply pop cooldowns early with a stun or your own Stormbolt to get these defensive cooldowns used as soon as possible. It's important to try and spread deep wounds as this is usually your top damage in arena if you do this properly. Remember the abilities used to spread deep wounds are Mortal Strike, Blade Storm, Cleave and Execute. 
Sweeping Strikes also works in conjunction with Deep Wounds. As you can see in this situation, I spread my Deep Wounds by using an Execute on the Priest, followed by a Mortal Strike on the Mage, spreading my Deep Wounds causing more multi-target pressure. Target choice is a fundamental aspect of arms which will also increase or decrease your damage output. If you are chasing a target too much, wasting mobility to keep up to them and having little uptime, this will result in lower damage and potentially wasting mobility. You may also drag out your healer away from the pillar, making them vulnerable to CC or burst swaps onto them. Warrior has great damage overall, so be mindful with your position and swap targets to give your team an easier time to live, as well as not needing to waste mobility. In this example, I'm bursting a mage, but he blinks away, so I opt to go on the priest without the need of using one of my mobility cooldowns. This means I maintain pressure overall, but keep my heroic leap for a better use potentially later on. I knew if I were to heroic leap in this position, the mage could potentially still kite me with another blink. I 100% know that I would have been overextending and forcing my healer in a bad position, which is why I opted to stay back, hit the shadow priest and maintain a good position as well as keep up with my damage. Setting up kills as arms is vital, as knowing these can find chinks in your enemy's armor in order to win the game. The main CC cooldowns an Arms Warrior will use to set up a kill are Storm Bolt, Intimidating Shout, and also Sharpen Blade when specced into it. You may not want to use all of these abilities for a kill, however, you should consider how likely it is that you can grab a kill to win to determine how many offensive cooldowns you want to commit. Storm Bolt is predominantly used on your kill target, so you can lock them in place to burst them down, potentially getting a kill. Stormbolt could also be used on enemy healers, keeping them locked out, denying healing to get kills on other targets or on themselves. Intimidating Shout will be used for CC on the enemy healer to also shut them down whilst you go for kills on other targets. You'd want to usually chain this with a Stormbolt so that you can create or add to your CC chain, creating a bigger kill opportunity for your team. Sharpen Blade is also a unique form of CC that could be incredibly valuable to winning games. Not only would it give you extra burst, but you can deny a lot of healing, increasing the likelihood of grabbing a kill. During kill potentials, it's ideal to have Warbreaker or Colossus Smash or Avatar ready to give you high burst damage which could be unhealable if it's deep into dampening. You may also utilize battle stance which gives even more damage as you're no longer hindered by defensive stance. You'll also want important mobility cooldowns if you need to kill a target that can kite you. This is so you can counter their mobility, for example charging after they blink or using Heroic Leap after they teleport away from you. This will allow you to reconnect. In this example, I take most of these things into consideration. I'm bursting the mage who has no ice blocks using my Warbreaker. I have both my Heroic Leap and Charge ready to maintain my kill potential after he blinks. I use my Intimidating Shout on the healer to deny heals on the mage, Following up, I charge the mage into a storm bolt and burst him down. Note that I also had sharpen blade still, but I was waiting to utilize it better. I could have used it for more burst pressure, but I was saving it to reduce healing effects. He had very little hots and the healer was in CC, so I was waiting for the healer to trinket, which would have triggered me to use my sharpen blade and deny healing. Stopping CC is a small yet essential part for arms warriors as it can make your team survive in situations that could result in a loss. The main abilities to CC are Storm Bolt, Intimidating Shout, Disarm, War Banner, Pummel and Charge. For stopping CC you'd want to use these cooldowns to stop casted CC, instant CC or even potential CC which can help keep you and your team alive. 
Stormbow, as you can see now, is a very versatile spell for arms. You can use it to stop incoming CC by using it on caster spells such as Polymorph, Fear and Cyclone on your healers, which will in essence help maintain your survival. Intimidating Shout is very effective as you can CC multiple targets in range instantly. It will not only stop CC, but it will usually bait out trinkets, making them vulnerable to follow up CC or kill potentials later. It should mainly be used defensively against teams you struggle to survive against because you will bait out their trinkets or deny them pressure in a game. Try to make use of its multi-CC purpose when possible as you could get even more trinkets or be even more disruptive to their offensive plays by stopping multiple CC from happening. You should not be afraid to fear only one enemy if needed as this can be enough to stop important CC in important situations to save your team from using defensive cooldowns or from death. Even though Disarm is mainly used against offensive cooldowns, it can be used to delay or stop CC from happening. Abilities like Kidney Shot, Storm Bolt, Garot or Cheap Shot can all be negated with the use of Disarm, which is very handy if you know they rely on these abilities to initiate or chain CC. Disarming will stop or at least negate it, buying you valuable time that could help you survive. Now, War Banner is used in the same way as the other abilities to stop CC, except War Banner doesn't actually stop CC. It does, however, heavily reduce it, making it ideal for situations when you know you can't stop the CC, but you can reduce it by 50%, which pretty much negates it when timed well. You would have to pre-War Banner in this sense, as it must be used before the CC hits, and it will not affect current CC. You can use it once again on casted CC or instant CC if you are confident it will be used. The oldest trick in the book is sometimes the best one. Pummel is great for stopping casted CC as it locks them out on their selected school, usually denying damage and CC unless dealing with a double school caster, i.e. a frost mage. Landing these at important times to stop CC is essential for your survival, as stopping a sheep alone may not be enough. For example, against an RMP, the mage may be casting a sheep, but a priest is ready for a fear. It could be best to hold onto the pummel if he fears first, because then you will keep your healer out of CC rather than your pummel going to waste. Charge being used to stop CC is a very rare situation, but it can have a huge effect and stop certain CC abilities. The main one is against priests, charging them when they're about to go for a fear on your healer, if timed well can make them miss time their fear or at least delay it by snaring them and regaining distance between the priest and your healer. There will be many situations where you will have to use multiple abilities to stop CC. Especially against targets where your main goal is to survive offensive plays from them. It's crucial to evaluate what can potentially happen during the enemy team's offensive play. That way you can use your abilities to stop CC when possible to negate the enemy from applying pressure or at least delaying it. By stopping CC, it also forces the opponents to not play too offensive, giving your team an easier time to live. You also save defensive cooldowns being used, making it easier to survive against teams and having them for future offensive goes when unable to stop CC. This is critical as a lot of Arms Warrior matchups you win by surviving, so being great at stopping CC in important moments can allow you to win most matchups. Usually Arms Warriors don't have the best toolkit to stop CC, however it has an amazing toolkit to peel damage with its defensive cooldown usage, which we will get right into. Most of the time playing an Arms Warrior, you can't always stop the CC, however you can prevent a lot of pressure and income in CC with great defensive plays of your toolkits allowing your team to live without using other defensive cooldowns or preventing them from certain death. 
Many of the abilities to stop CC can also be used for peeling damage and are used in the same way. These include Intimidating Shout, Storm Bolt, War Banner, and Charge. Pummel may be used on different schools compared to CC schools. If you are in the situations where it's more important to stop big damaging spells, such as Ebon Bolt, Ray of Frost, or Drain Life. This situation may happen when you couldn't stop the CC, when you are low on HP, or when the damage is unhealable. Pick and Disarm against heavy hitting melee DPS or Hunters gives you a short CC that can't be dispelled, that completely disrupts offensive cooldowns and certain CC mechanics. This will be its main use and you can even use it on warriors to avoid executes or when in desperate need to survive a melee's onslaught as it will negate their damage completely. Doing this can make you hold on to other defensives or buy you an extra lifeline living against pressure that would otherwise kill you. If you need another defensive to help your teammates survive pressure then Jewel is perfect for this. It will reduce any pressure your desired target does to other targets by a ton perfect for offensive cooldowns or high pressure from the enemy team. It has a 1 minute cooldown too, making it ideal for big offensive cooldowns used to slay your partners, which can save your teams from dying or from using other important defensive cooldowns. Although defensive stance can't be utilized for peeling, it provides an excellent way to mitigate damage on yourself, proving very useful for defensive play. Make sure to be in it as often as possible when taking pressure to ensure that you can survive to the best of your ability and give your healer an easier time to heal. Die by the Sword is an Arms Warrior's only big self-defensive spell which has a long CD so it must be used well. To do that, there's two efficient ways of using this. You can use it on incoming damage, reducing damage on yourself that can't be parried. You'd want to activate it before taking damage as you do with all damage reduction defensive spells. The other way is of course to parry melee abilities, negating all damage from melee attacks as long as you face them. If dealing with a mix of damage then usually it will be good to use it on higher HP to reduce a lot of incoming pressure, saving yourself most of the time. On paper, Rallying Cry doesn't sound too great, however when timed to perfection you can save you or your partner's lives, making it essential to time in situations when you are close to dying. Much like stopping CC, using multiple abilities to ensure your team lives makes for a great arms warrior. The best arms warriors will be able to do this correctly with minimal defensive cooldown usage. The more you play, the more you'll read these situations and know what cooldowns to use effectively, allowing your team to live in situations with efficiency too. Connecting to your targets and keeping up to them well is another key trait an arms warrior needs. An arms warrior has two main abilities used to catch up to their target, being charge and heroic leap. Using them effectively means that you will keep up to your target well, increasing your damage in a game as well as making it easier to deny your enemy team CC or pressure. You'll want to use charge as a gap closer if your targets get away. It's important against classes such as mages to counter their mobility with your own, i.e. charge after they blink so you don't get kited. Heroic Leap can be used in the same way but you don't need a target for it, making it more versatile. This is ideal for offensive or defensive purposes. Offensively leaping to connect your targets behind pillars will allow you to connect to them, dealing more pressure and potentially getting kills. You could use it defensively as well, leaping far away from melee or out of line of sight from casters, avoiding a lot of damage, saving you from death. Although it's not a mobility usage itself, hamstring is a big necessity that will be key to not wasting mobility. If you don't have a snare up on your target and you are snared, then you will get kited if they are running, which is what will make you waste mobility. By keeping them hamstringed, you will force them to kite you in other ways, using mobility or CC on you to kite you, making it harder to kite you in that situation. Maintaining snares will also be essential to keep up to your target, enabling you to do more damage, stop CC, 
or peel damage. Using Stormbolt could also be used to reconnect against targets that are typically harder for arms to stick on. If you don't want to use a charge or heroic leap, you could use a Stormbolt to lock them in place to connect and force the enemy to either trinket it or use other defensives or mobilities to get away from you. Bear in mind you don't want to use it all the time for mobility as it can be more valuable for kill potentials or stopping CC as explained earlier. It's mainly used against classes that will have difficulty connecting to without the help of Stormbolt. Bladestorm could also be used for mobility when needing to stick to high mobility classes. It immunes you to snares and any CC making it easy to catch up to your targets, reconnecting without the use of charge or heroic leap. That covers everything on Arms Warrior gameplay. Make sure to plus skill this guide and feel free to leave comments about this guide. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.